You're ready for this, Mr. Ogilvy? Yes, yeah. You've done the prep work. You've looked at the pictures, you watched the videos. Do you, do you have the little stuffed one with you? Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's in my bag. You've spent time with that? 15 minutes every day. I got my brother to help me with that. Good. You're ready to move on to the next step. Um, where, where is it? It's behind my chair. Oh God, I mean like it's in a cage? It's in a cage, right? It's in a cage? Yes, breathe. What's your worst imagined outcome? That, uh, my heart's just gonna explode or something. And how likely is that? It's highly unlikely. It's highly unlikely. Yeah. <sighs> Let's do this. All right. We're gonna start slowly. Just a 10 second exposure, right? Just 10 seconds. You can handle that. Ready? Here it comes. Three. Nature of the emergency? Uh, Dr. Storper? physician with limited abilities, you cannot kill a man by waving a rat in his face. I made his heart explode. You are not God! You cannot make a man's heart explode! You can bore a man to death, but uh, that's the extent of your powers. Now, what disturbs me about this incident is that it exacerbates your depression. You've been going on a downward spiral for five years. I don't think that's true. Well, what have you done in that time, huh? Wrote a book on death that nobody read. Got married and divorced. Whined incessantly about a patient that moved away. Michael, Michael. It's time to be aggressive. We've got to attack this depression head on. You understand? Now, what course of action would you advise to a patient who was similarly shackled by misery. First, I would tell him to keep a thought journal. Uh, good, 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 good. I would have him rate his various activities in terms of how they made him feel on a scale of one to 10, one being extremely sad uh, and 10 being extremely happy. Do that, do that. And then we'll assess. Mm -hmm. I uh, can give you a pill that shoots up everything to 10 immediately, but unfortunately, it includes a high risk of cerebral hemorrhage. No, we'll do this the conventional way. Comme vous voulez. Stagnation, lack of forward movement, sense that you are stuck, admired, unable to continue. sense of disappointment, disillusionment. That's 
just not going to happen. Well, we believe that all things considered, Dr. Storper is being very generous. The percentage of royalties from the television show was agreed upon before these proceedings. That's hardly generous. We are willing to offer up the profits from the sale of the Edelweiss ski chalet. That would be acceptable. The feeling that you are stuck in a loop, repeating the same destructive behavior, making the same mistakes. Um, Stand by. You should speak to him. I'm an adult. I'll talk to him. I want to. Okay, back off. It's okay. Uh, Jim, thank you. So, you should come to the award show thingy. With you? You're divorcing me. David, we've been through this. I enjoy you in small doses. It's waking up beside you that's problematic. Besides. It might be fun. I mean, it's not every day that your TV show gets nominated, right? We might even win. Look, it's been a trying week. I, I have to run. No, David, we did this thing together, right? You abandoned it, but we did it together. So just acknowledge it. I killed a man oh. at work the other day. Suck it up. Seriously. Sorry. That was insensitive. Yes, it was. Yeah, OK. My bad. Sorry. But still, suck it up. Please. For me? An overwhelming sense of futility, pointlessness, feeling of inertia. Michael Dyer's file. Thank you. And the exterminator tried for an hour, but he said he couldn't find the squirrel. He said he could find its scat, which is poo. I, I know that scat is poo. But he couldn't find the squirrel proper. He set a trap and told me to call him. Beth. Would you cancel my appointments for the week? All of them? Everything after today, yes. Why? Why? Because I'm, I'm going through a lot. The divorce and the death of Mr. Ogilvy. You know what? Just, just, you don't have to know why. Just do it, please. OK. These are signs of depression and should not be ignored. By the way, I'm not transcribing your dictations. I don't do diaries. Oh. Hi. Uh, hi, sorry I'm late. No problem. Uh, you're gonna be really mad, but I gotta cancel again. Oh. I'm sorry, we have our presentation of the senior web campaign to Lynn and the ministry people. We're still tweaking. This is the quick hi, so hi. Hi, how are you doing? Uh, I've got like a minute, but I'm good, uh, busy. Good, are you worried about the presentation? Not really. You trying to squeeze in a session or is this just chit chat? Well, it's interesting because uh, they accomplish the same thing. Chit chat is a way of Am taking I, a quick I'm reading oh, shit. on someone. I, I really have to go. Uh, it was good seeing you. Okay, um, talk to you again in two months. Yeah, it's two months. You can call anytime. Yep. And I know you have Dr. Keener, but if you need me. Have I ever not needed you? I'll call. <laughs> Bye, Dr. Storfer. Goodbye, Michael. Bye. Ocean waters lies one of nature's most impressive shapeshifters. The giant Pacific octopus can change color at will, expressing mood, comfort level, and intentions to nearby animals. It's also able to change texture using knobs of muscle to its surroundings. The giant Pacific octopus grows bigger and Good morning. We're up in 15. Seriously? I'm sweating. I'm sweating right through my dress. You know, it's Lynn that does this to me. She, she can see that I'm uncomfortable, and then she just attacks. You know. The giant Pacific octopus can change color at will, expressing mood, comfort level, and intention to all nearby animals. Oh, that's that's cool. Look confident, and everyone will think you're confident. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll try it. How did you know all that stuff about the octopus? I uh, I have a minor in marine biology. Really? Yeah. Ooh. Let's do this. Eating a hot dog. One. Looked at pigeons. Three. Fed pigeon. Four. <laughs> Daryl. Reading your depression journal makes me question whether life is worth living. It's not all bad. What this dismal list of 
moments of isolation and misery tell me is that you must engage with the world. Yeah, I know. Are you going out? Are you meeting new people? Not really, no. Well, force yourself. Get out there. Socialize. It's, it's not that easy. Well, get an app. I, I can recommend several. You like German women? No, I, no, I mean, I do. You have to act on this. Because you know that depression rewires the brain. And you will have a mental collapse and be lost to us forever. I know. How about Puerto Ricans? On behalf of the ministry, I just want to say how disappointed we are in the seniors' initiative. This is shoddy, poorly presented garbage. Can you imagine if I really said that? This would be the worst meeting ever. I love it. We all love it. Mike and Armand, you and your team have done amazing work. Except for you, Margo, you're fired. I'm kidding, I can't fire you. Armand, fire Margo. Can you imagine? <laughs> well, it wasn't me, it was Mike. He cracked the nut, you really know seniors. Well, wonderful, wonderful work, except for Margo, of course. Mike, I'm going to have you fly to Calgary tonight to introduce this initiative to Anna and her team. You're going to handle Eastern Canada, Central Canada, starting two weeks from now in Sudbury. You're going to be racking up those frequent flyer miles. Amazing job, everyone. I'm sorry, what was that about Calgary? Well, that's where you're going. Your flight's at 11. OK, so this is serious. It wasn't a joke. That'd be a weird joke. Look, I have things to do here. Why don't we send someone else? Why don't we send Margo? Margo? She's a sweaty mess. No, you have to go. You're the senior whisperer. That's what Armand calls you. Did you know that? <laughs> no, but can we talk about this? Because I could video conference in. Look, you're going or you're fired. Can you imagine? Look, have fun. Mike, you do know this is a promotion, don't you? Congratulations. <laughs> Claire? Claire, what uh, What are you doing here? Hi, Beth called me to help explain my filing system. Uh. And uh, she also said that you're canceling all your patients. Why are you canceling all your patients? Um, can we? I killed a patient. <gasps> you did not kill a patient. Who? Mr. Ogilvy. Oh, this squirrel guy. Yeah, he had a heart attack in this chair. And yes, there was a squirrel involved. So you're canceling all of your patients because you're afraid that you'll kill again. <sighs> Are you hiding away and moping? I'm making an effort. I'm going to that award show for the, for the TV show that I renounced. Well, that's fun. I'm going with Sammy. Oh. OK. Just make sure not to drink too much. These tests, you know, all of us, that's the penitent ballroom test. Yeah, how delicious is culture? Our next category is delicious because this award is for best Ottawa food truck. David, you came. Hello, Levi. Hello, David. I see your ethics can't keep you away when there's a free meal involved. <laughs> <laughs> Bazooka Joe's all halal Putin. Putin agara da vida. Did you win? We. Did we win? Uh, no, they haven't announced it yet. There's a million categories in two legs. We'll win. And when we do, you'll hear the big news. What big news? You'll be pleased. Well, you will, Sammy. David, have a drink. Champagne's really cheap, but it just keeps coming. Cheers. The nominees are Best Children's Theatre Company. Just outside of Ottawa. And now, the nominee for Best Ottawa Produced Television Show. <laughs> Question period. Producers, Parliament. If you win, we go up too. No. Exposure. I've had what? Two bottles? Exposure. Producer, Lévi Salmon, Samantha Dunbar, and David. David. Thank you. Thank you for this. Exposure 
is a show about people facing their fears. It is television that heals. And I would like to announce that we have been asked to help produce a version for China. That's a potential audience of 1.25 billion people. Something to be proud of. For Canada to be proud of. I would like to thank everybody who worked on the production. I am Dr. David Storper. I'm one of the creators of the series. In the beginning, this show was about people facing their fears on camera, brave people. But that wasn't interesting enough, apparently. So they replaced the people with actors. The show is a lie. And now, apparently, we are exporting that lie to China. This show is not healing anybody. David, I think it's... My marriage failed because of this show. I killed a man. Okay. Just I what recently. What a thrill. Thank you. Merci. <laughs> Exposure, thank you, Dr. Dom Perignon. I think I might be getting depressed again. You think? I was doing so well. Yeah, until you quit the show. Well, you filed for divorce. Well, you know, David, the marriage wasn't working, right? You barely spoke. It was like sleeping with a brick. My doctor thinks I might be heading for a breakdown. David, I am just, I am so sick of this self-pitying shit. Life is hard. Sometimes you just have to like light a scented candle, draw a nice hot bath, maybe smoke a doobie. Doobie? You mean a joint? I'm sorry, I didn't realize you were rest period. Get some pot. I don't I don't know where to get pot. Really? It's 2016. I have some in my purse. I'm driving. Yes, uh, there are only four passengers on your flight. Oh. So we're canceling it. Oh. But we're putting you onto an earlier flight, which is leaving right now. You got the last seat. It's your lucky day. Oh. Uh. Destiny. Fate. And Beth, I know you're not transcribing this. I'm just saying this for myself. You can't fight it. It is what it is. One day you're alive. And then you see a squirrel and your heart explodes. Waiting in the lounge for flight 323 to Catherine to be bored at this time. If that's a yes, I'll go to the squad one. Just let it go. Float. Let the grand narrative of fate take over. Yes, enjoy the flight. Go right ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, are you okay? Yeah. Sir? Yeah. Can you come out here? Okay. Sir, can I help you? What? Mr. What? I gotta get to Calgary. Okay, okay. Look at me. Can you see me? Yes. Say you can see me. I can see you. I have to get to Calgary. Okay. You're fine. You're not in any danger. Look at me. What color is my hair? Breathe deeply. Good. Breathe. What color is my scarf? Blue. I have to get to Calgary. Sir, you're not getting on the plane. I have to get to Calgary. Sir? Uh, Sir, put the camera away. Uh, Sir, can I get security to gate 19, please? Breathe. Stop filming, asshole. Breathe. Okay. Security. Okay. I'm fine. I'm fine. Thank you. I'm okay. <laughs> Where to? 
Bus station? How, how did this happen exactly? Sir, come on out of the building. How did it? It started in the bathroom on the 17th floor. Somebody must have knocked over a candle. Are you okay? I'm, I'm, uh, I think I'm in shock, which is why I appear disoriented. I'm a, doc a doctor. Oh my God. The smoke looks like a giant fiery serpent. Candles, I swear. People never learn. Yeah. The horrible world full of giant fire serpents. Are you seeing this? Uh, there's a patient waiting for you in your office. What? I told you to cancel. No, he just walked in. I couldn't stop him. He had a key. He had a key?